I'm Zash, and welcome to episode 52 of my G Senjo no Mao, or the Devil on G String, Let's Read. Joining me, as always, is my co reader, Faith. Last episode, Kyosuke's plan to be a complete asshole to Mizaha did not have the intended effect. He wanted to dump her, but it didn't seem to work. Also, this episode is going to be a bit of a short one because the split between Mizaha's good ending and bad ending occurs in about 25 minutes. So we'll be ending it there and the two endings will be separate uploads. Anyways, Please enjoy this next episode. The school day greeted me with a bizarre incident. I stepped over to my desk. Several photos were strewn across it. I have no idea where or when they had been taken. They were pictures of me in the act of falling asleep. My eyelids were drooping and my mouth was hanging wide open. In other words, I looked like an idiot. A note with the words THREAT written on it have been clumsily stashed in the desk. If you don't want your bitch to see these, pay up 500 trillion yen. My bitch? Yo, Kyosuke-kun, morning! Hey, kid. What? Did something happen? You know... Have you been threatened or something? Fess up. What? What are you talking about? Did someone tell you to give them money? Yeah, 500 yen. It was 500 trillion yen. Ellipses. Ah, uh, oops. Fuck, you tricked me. Where did you get this anyway? I held up the photo of me looking like an idiot. <sighs> Dude, that shit is so funny! Stop laughing, cunt! Gimme! <sighs> he lunged at the photo and snatched it with the agility of a monkey. Hey, gimme back! Like I'm gonna do that! With this baby, you might as well be my toy! You think so? Duh! As long as I have this photo, you gotta listen to everything I say! Hmm. Sure, Tori aside, I don't really want that photo leaked to the masses. Alright, if you say so. It's... Yes, sir! Y yes, sir. What do you want me to do? Well, you know, if you were a girl, my order would be a no-brainer. Wait, what would you make me do if I were a girl? Shoulder massage! Hell yeah, man! Oh, okay. You had me there for a second. Alright, I got it. Go clean the bathroom! Why? Because it smells, asshole? You've got to be shitting me! Hey, everyone! Check this out! Uh... Hey, I got some sweet pics of Kyo's... Fine, I'll do it, sir. <laughs> yeah, baby. Roll over when I say so, and it's all good. All I have to do is clean it, right? Sure, but I want to be able to eat off it. You'll give me those pictures back once I'm done, right? Of course. All right, I'll get on it right now. Aichi laughed triumphantly as I turned and left the classroom. Ellipses. I'm in the men's restroom. I half-heartedly scrub at the fixtures and surfaces. For about ten minutes. At that point, I start writing on the walls with water. Aichi is a pervert. My masterpiece doesn't last but a minute before it dripped and evaporated away. Uh. As I leave the restroom, I bump into Shiratori. 
Morning. Morning. Were you cleaning? Why? The smell of detergent. Yeah, I was. Oh. That's good of you. I didn't volunteer for this job, if that's what you're thinking. Hmm. I should go water those flowers. Why? Can't you just leave it to someone else? It's fine. I actually do volunteer for that. I see. Well, later. Yeah. Her wistful voice trailed behind me. The task is finished, Master Edekichi-san. Oh? Done, are you? Very good. Now give me back those photos. Sure. He obediently handed them over. <sighs> Making me do all that crap. <laughs> What's so funny? It's just... It's so hilarious that you actually think this is over. Huh? Ah! Yeah, the negatives. I've still got the photo negatives. I didn't say I'd give those back. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. What kind of dick always wanted to blackmail someone? It's just delicious. Giving you a little relief and then turning on the pain. I had no intentions of letting you go from the start. He punctuated his monologue by pulling an exact copy of the photo he handed me out of his pocket. Now, to show Shiratori. Wait a second, you son of a gun. Shiratori son! <laughs> He's too fast. What? Shiratori always scowled coldly when approached by Aichi or the other classmates. Take a look at this! He held the photo up to Shiratori's face. Oh, seems. Well, at least she wasn't scowling anymore. Aichi, you dumb shit! <laughs> How about them apples, bitch? This is... <laughs> now hate him. Cute. Her cheeks went red. Huh? Why? Can... Can I have this? Sh sure. Shiratori reached for the photo Aichi was holding and quickly hid it in her bag. Hey, Shiratori, give me that back. Don't wanna. You... I scratch my head, and Aichi moans. <laughs> Why? I look like a frickin' clown now! He collapsed to the ground pitifully. Into the corner of woe with you. Megalipses. Ellipses. Lunch break. I was on the rooftop with Shiratori. She had made me lunch again. I suppose my food expenses are going down at least. Aren't you eating? I didn't talk much as I ate. Am I a nuisance? Um, I don't mind you being here, but... Say something. The silence is killing me. Oopsies. She looked puzzled. When I was making your lunch today, I cracked one of the eggs to pour it in the pan, right? Right? And suddenly, two yolks came out. Eh, that happened sometimes. What happened then? That's all. Ellipses. I was kind of happy. R right. Next? Years ago, when I was looking at the stars in the night sky... Yeah? Someone said, oh, a shooting star. Ellipses. Then when I turned to look, it wasn't there anymore. Well, I suppose that's to be expected. Those things move quickly. When I was making copies in the office the other day... Ellipses. The first sheet wouldn't copy, no matter how many times I tried it. Uh, yeah, I can sympathize with that. 
Last week I went to buy a toilet seat cover. Flipsies. But I wasn't sure whether to get a U-shaped one or an O-shaped one, so I just ended up leaving. The troubles of everyday life, I see. Oh, and... There's more? I was watching a movie on network TV, and when the commercials came on, the volume jumped up real quick and scared me. You don't say. And I was watching a rental DVD, and when I turned off the DVD player, the cable was so loud that it spooked me again. Ellipses. Her incessant rambling continued until the next class started. I had a hunch that Shiratori would accost me again after school. She didn't fail to deliver. Are you free today? I am, but I've no intention of playing around with you. Mm. Later. What about tomorrow? Oh yeah, there's no school tomorrow. I could easily arrange to meet with her, but do you want to hang out with me that much? She nodded over and over. If I can just... be around you. What a pain. Being together might be fun for you, but it's boring for me. She had nothing to give me after all. Um, I've got tickets to the symphony. What? Wait. I need to calm down. I almost stood up in a frenzy. I'll pass. What? You're joking, right? My response seemed to be quite unexpected. So, what should... Do you really want to be with me that much? Yeah. I don't get it. What spurred Shiratori this far? I need to think about this seriously. What use is Shiratori to me? Is she anything but a waste of time? Fair enough. Come over to my apartment tonight. Your apartment? Yeah, I can make some time later. Um, uh, but... What? Going over to your house so suddenly. Ellipses. And at night, I've got a curfew. If I come home too late, Dad will get mad. You're quite a lady, aren't you? Dad's been pulling all ladders. He's been in a rotten mood lately. Never mind, then. We can hang out next week. I turned my back to Shiratori. Why should I rearrange my schedule around her? Well, she's given up by now, so it's no big deal. Wait. Ellipses. I'll go. Tell me your address. Ellipses. She seems serious. Make ellipses. Ellipses. Most people don't look for sound logic in love. Yuki spoke while elegantly wafting the aroma of a cup of black tea towards her. Mizuha's older sister's adult gestures had always fascinated her. However, this boy is unlike most people. I'm sure he's pondering as we speak what benefits he might be able to receive from you. Benefits? Yugi crosses her legs and her face becomes unusually serious. I'll be frank. I think you should give up tonight. Why? You need to wait until he opens his heart up to you a bit more. But why? Would you like the brutal end of Frank? Mizuha froze up. A dark light occasionally twinkled in her sister's eyes. One the likes of which she had never seen in her sheltered life. You're of no use to him. Mizaha was at a loss for words. He's strong. He spent years of his life working hard to make a living almost entirely without aid. On the other hand, what about you? Mizaha's heart had been run through. She had never faced adversity. She had never even faced inconvenience. Her father had the money to buy her whatever she wanted. Books, telescopes, stuffed toys. Everything she owned, her father had bought her. Well, 
but you know as well as I do how cold my parents are to each other. Her mother and father rarely saw each other. Misa had no idea what drove her mother to marry an arrogant man like her father. She might as well chalk it up to the fact that they met each other in their prime marriageable years. There certainly didn't seem to be anything deeper in their relationship. The vast, empty house she grew up in did nothing to ease the sensation that her parents were merely passing their lives together with nary a second thought, nor purpose. However, despite Mizuha's concerns, her sister spoke up harshly. Never talk about that kind of melodrama in front of Kyosuke. Mizuha's kind sister went silent for a moment. Before Mizuha was a rarely seen side of Tokido Yuki the one which lived through some of the greatest difficulties humanity could muster. Judging by my analysis, he was likely brought up in an unimaginably poor conditions. My parents are cold to each other, it's a common complaint, especially when compared to the horrors of his life. S sorry He's probably interested in women which fall under one of the following categories, Yuki said as she raised her index finger. Women with especially great abilities, women with quite a few assets under their own names, and women with compassion capable of healing his trauma. It's also possible he might waive all the thought of benefit for someone he has a sufficient bond with. Women with especially great abilities, like you, Nessa? Mizuha's question prompted Yuki's eyes to widen. She quickly shook her head with a wry smile. <laughs> right. Who knows? I might become your biggest rival. I feel like that is foreshadowing. No way! Mizuha involuntarily shouted and the bartender gave them a curious glance. Calm down. I was talking about someone influential, like Azai Cannon. Someone world-renowned. I'm definitely not world-renowned. Then, can you understand his heart? Can you heal his deep wounds? Her sister's eyes told her that any attempt would be in vain. Indeed, Mizaha was immature. She'd never really been able to speak to people until her recent reunion with her sister. She merely hid within a practiced, hardened shell, choosing to ignore the glares of society and her peers. It would be impossible for a girl like that to excise a complex darkness from the heart of her lover. Then. It's hopeless? Maybe I'll take him. I've never said this about a man, but you know, I think I wouldn't mind dating him. Was she serious? Misa couldn't tell. What will you do, Misa? Will you put up a fight, or hand him over gracefully? I wouldn't want anything as unsightly as the royal in fighting. Misa hung her head. Shot coursed through her every vessel. In the end, Ozai Kyosuke and Shiratori Mizuha weren't meant to be. Okay. If that's what you want, I'll do it. You'll give him up? Mizuha was puzzled. I'll give him up for today. Oh. Yuki's eyes seem able to bore through Mizuha's frivolity, able to thoroughly condemn her. The sun set, and just beyond the coffee shop's window, snow began to settle upon the metropolitan expanse of Central Boulevard. Megalipses. Ellipses. Ellipses. Megalipses. It's beyond frigid today. Sure Tori isn't going to come, is she? What does she think will happen, I wonder? The plan was for her to come to the apartment of a boy she barely knows, even if she did turn out to be someone oblivious of my obvious intentions. Tokita would warn her about the situation. Hmm? The sing-song call of the intercom surprised me. It was snowing outside, but both Shiratori and Tokita were at the entrance. I let them in without exchanging a word over the speaker. What do they want? Did Tokita plant some questionable thought in Shiratori's mind again? After a few moments, my apartment's door opened. They were both still in their uniforms. Apparently they hadn't been home since school ended. What a lovely place to live. 
Pukita spoke theatrically and spread her arms in a fitting manner. Come in, Shiratori. What are you doing here, Tokita? Nothing, naturally. It's late, so I wanted to escort Misa. I'll be leaving immediately. Is that so? Later, Misa. You're on your own from here on out. Tokita? What? Nothing. Never mind. Very well. Till next time. She leaves with that. It seems she really was just escorting Shiratori here. The door closes. Only Shiratori and I remained, and she promptly put on the expression of an abandoned child. I'm surprised you showed up. You told me to. Her fingertips f faintly trembled. Even she can't be naive, infantile enough to fail to grasp the situation. What should I do? I had no loving hesitation for her. What do you think? Pardon? We're dating, right? Yeah. I laughed darkly. You're not expecting some fairy tale love or anything like that from me, are you? Oopsies. The quivering of her fingertips spread to her shoulders. I sat down on the bed and beckoned her to me. Come here. I'll show you what kind of guy I am. What use is Shiratori to me? Why the hesitation? Gonzo once told me that bitches are to be eaten up. He said that was their purpose in existence. This is the whole reason I invited you over. Okay. She slowly shuffled over, as if sliding on the flooring. What should I do? Hmm. Give me a second to brainstorm here. I stared fixedly at the terrified girl before me. Ellipses. The image I beheld sparked the first glimmer of doubt in me. Trying to push that aside, I groped out for her in lust. Ah? Uh? I grabbed both her hands. Shiratori's body jumped as if she were a violin string I had just attacked with a bow in a grand martelle. Hmm? I noticed something. Something in Shiratori's left hand. She had been holding something behind her back ever since I opened the door. It reflected the room's light for a moment. What's that? Oh, uh, a CD. She presented it to me with both hands. I look at the CD jacket. Judging from the track list, the title might as well have been called An Introduction to Bach. Why did you bring something like this? I thought we could listen to it together. I'll pass. I've never heard of the performer. That shelf over there has plenty of better quality Bach just waiting to be played. I... Sorry. Did you become interested in classical music just so you'd have something to talk to me about? Oh? That's actually pretty cute. Sorry for not being useful. Ellipses. She looked down dejectedly once more. That motion forced me to confront the fact that I was doing nothing here but trying to torment the weak. Is that acceptable? As I Gonzo had taught me to pounce on my prey the second it leaves itself open. However, jumping and devouring this poor girl would fulfill nothing but my sexual desire. Unlike business, this isn't a kill or be killed situation. Ellipses. I think for a moment and decide. <laughs>